Hello everyone and welcome back to A Thousand Projects. Today I'm going to be looking at the growth clock. Now we bought one of these for my boy uh, who's four years old to help us to get a bit of extra sleep in the morning so he doesn't wake us up at four o'clock uh, or usually 6.30ish but anyway now we can get him to uh, come through and wake us up at about 7.30 which is great and uh, if he wakes up before the um, little sun is up then he plays in his room. So it's been really really successful. Um, it's a, it's a it's a clock. We'll open this box in a moment uh, with a nighttime face and a daytime face. And at nighttime, the nighttime face is on, and uh, it's got a whole little stars around here that uh, I'll, I'll stick a picture in. Um, a whole little stars that count down as the night goes on, and uh, does the same with the sun. And you can set it for a daytime nap or a or a nighttime nap. Now he doesn't sleep during the day. He gave up daytime naps a long time ago. Uh, but certainly at night it's been the most amazing thing we've ever bought and it's, it's made a huge difference and he's really bought into the whole idea. Uh, it's functional and it works. It's got a few things for me functionality wise that I think are, that, that I think are missing and I'd, I'd like to be able to set different times for during the week. So for instance on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday when he goes off to kindergarten we need to wake up earlier so I'd like to preset uh, 6.45 in the morning uh, whereas on the rest of the week um, it would be good to set 7.30 in the morning. Um, you can't do this. I'm having to manually set it every day. So the point about this video is to have a tear down of this, have a look to see what's inside, and uh, see if uh, it's easy to hack or not, or, or where we go from that. So let's get to it. Now this this I bought off, uh, off eBay, uh, the second one. I didn't, uh, didn't want to use the clock we bought him, uh, which I didn't buy off eBay. And it comes with it comes with a delightful little book uh, to read to them, which he absolutely loves. Uh, so definitely, if you don't get the go clock, see if you can get a copy of this book. It's really a lot of fun. Um, right. So in the box is the clock. This one's looking a little bit scratched on that side, but it is an older uh, it was an older clock, and it's for all intents and purposes work will work just fine. I assume this one works. It was sold as working. Um, instruction booklet, which we don't really need, and a power supply. So I will just plug him in and let's just check that it works. Huh. Just having a look at this, looks like a nicely sealed unit. No screw holes. Hmm. Hope that comes off all right. Let's have a look. Let's plug it in first and see whether it works. Um, that being the most important part. Uh, now, huh, an extra plug. There's one thing about this room that I've got, well, about all the equipment that I've got, is that I, I run out of plugs very, very quickly. So let me just sort that out back in a sec. Extender plugs, my friend. Okay. Here we go. Let's uh, plug this in, see whether it comes on. There we go, there's the time. Uh, so we can go into setting mode, um, go into there, that we can set the time of day up. So if we go into that uh, 1.33, ah, it's 10 to 2 at the moment, that's fine for now. Um, it's not AM though, it's PM. Uh, it's on, and then I can set to, uh, let's go through it again. So up button to go into the menu. That button to select nighttime scene. Um, set this for see this is set for seven eleven a.m. So let's just set it for seven thirty thereabouts uh, a.m. Do the same. Do the same for your. See, I don't like this interface. I think the interface is awful. Um, set the same for a daytime nap. Uh, what was that one? I can't remember. Oh, this is an alarm. Uh, I didn't want to be waking him up with an alarm at this age. I think he's just he's too young for that. Uh, and then the other thing to set is the brightness. So we can set, uh, so the brightness was set to really zero. So you can see it's starting to go blue there. Uh, and we'll leave it on a, on a brightness of 10 for this video. Okay, so that's the clock. Um, right. Um, so put it in, into your mode. It's a, a down button that gives you the, the, the uh, daytime sun face. 
uh, and then you click that button and he should give a little wink there we go and fades into blue and nighttime scene so that that's the basic set it, from a concept it's brilliant from an interface point of view yeah I don't think it's very good now problem with this is I've just noticed there are no screws on it so let's get uh, something I wasn't expecting to use today get out my trusty uh, plastic one and see oh, <laughs> that just broke that off I wonder whether this is a sealed unit or not okay what I don't want to do is be shoving a screwdriver in here because it's just going to wreck it Okay, so this is probably a video on how to butcher a grow clock more than anything else. And I kind of do think that this front face is, if anything's going to come off easily, it will be the front face with screws behind there. That would make sense. There we go, that's unclipping. That is unclipping, but wow, not easy and not a nice way to have to unclip it. I mean, this I can, this, this I can, I can fix this here. Shouldn't have to get so violent with it. But I was right in guessing that the front plate comes off. Right, so we then got a plate on top of that. Note to self, switch off mobile phone when filming. Right, so let's get the plastic plates off. I think I'm going to see if I can invest in some better uh, plastic tools for this. But I'm right, there's the two, there's the two screw holes in there. I don't know if you can see that. There's one, there's one there, and there's one there. So I was right about that, at least. Uh, where is my trusty screwdriver set? There you go, trusty screw screwdriver set. Good old Maplin one. Cheers, Maplin. Sorry to see you go, but really, you didn't keep up with the times. Okay, so what have we got here now? We've got um, a really interesting LCD screen. I, I was interested to see if it was a round screen. I knew it wouldn't be square, but it is an octagonal screen which is really interesting. We've got the uh, strip connector at the bottom there. And uh, I mean, it's an LCD screen, so ultimately that can be, uh, I mean, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a segment LCD screen. So this can be any shape. It's not like a normal uh, TFT screen or something, which has got pixels, which, which are far more difficult to do in, in, um, in shapes, which is certainly far more expensive. Right, let's see if we can get this guy out now without, That side. Oh, hang on. We've got so we've got another screw, another two screws down here. It might be worth undoing those because then the whole back might come off, and I think that might be that's probably a better way of doing this. I can imagine. I just want to be really careful not to break this. Um, off. A hidden screw down here somewhere. It's bound to be it's bound to be clipped at this stage. Hmm. 
not the easiest of case to get open and I guess these things are generally not up for repair or for uh, you know you don't think these if these things break you wouldn't try and fix them you would just chuck them away and buy another one there we go that does clip out there we are so there we go that's the front face a bit of damage there from me taking it off not too worried about that at this stage um, There's the clock uh, and the circuit board. Not expecting a lot in the circuit board. We've got our buttons over here. And let's see what else we've got. Uh, pull that out. Almost likely going to be a single single chip solution, a, a chip on board solution. So there you go, July 27, 2010, revision six. Uh, I've got a piezo mic over there. That's simply for the alarm, which I wasn't interested in. Holding on to this is just some tape. So I would imagine that this. Well, I don't know. Let's have a look. No judgments yet. No. Oh, what did I pull off there? No. Oh, of course, there's going to be the LED lighting behind. So this will have the LED lighting behind it. Makes sense. So there's there's the LED lighting going in there. Aha, so there's the two LED lights. And there is the chip. Now what is that? That is a something. Is that LAN? Hmm. So what do we have here? We'll have a small power supply on here. We've got power coming in here couple of caps there, a couple of transistors, I wonder if this is part of a debound circuit, um, cap there, a couple of resistors around there, some more transistors here, crystal, and uh, single board. Now, I think if I was going to hack this and see what the, see what the interface is, there's bound to be a JTAG on here somewhere. Um, so I might be able to hack onto that and see see if I can reprogram it. Uh, it depends on how to get compilers and so forth with it, get to understand the processor. And the other possibility would be to do a new board. All right, so after a quick Google, I found the uh, data sheet for this processor. It's an Elan Microelectronics Core processor. And it is an EM78P468N 8-bit microprocessor. Now, I'm not expecting anything more than an 8-bit processor for this. Uh, it's just got an LCD, a few LCD segments to, to manage, a uh, bit of timing, timekeeping, um, and, and, and a few timer triggers on it. It's really a pretty simple circuit and pretty simple software, or should be anyway. So this is the data sheet. You can go and look it up if you want. Um, it's obviously... It's a no-brainer why this processor was chosen, or, or a processor like this anyway has been chosen, because it has a built-in LCD driver circuit, and that makes sense. You don't want external uh, circuitry to manage that. You've got a small amount of space inside the clock. Um, and for something as simple as this, you know, use something with a built-in driver, it, it, it makes a lot of sense. The other thing I notice here is it's got a 4K uh, one-time programmable uh, uh, read-only memory ROM. Um, so I'm not going to be able to... Well, I don't think anyway I'll be able to hack this very easily. If somebody does know how to do it, um, let me know it's above what I can do. Uh, so I think the way to proceed with this project would be to um, choose a new processor and make up a new board, which would be a really interesting process to go through anyway. Of course, I'm more familiar with the Atmel processors, but I haven't tried much with the uh, ST processors yet. I've had a quick play with them. Uh, so quite keen to get to know those ones. Uh, so I'm not sure. We'll see which way we go. Um, so I think I'm going to stop the video at this point. This is be the end of part one. This um, will be a multi-part project. So stay tuned and uh, please subscribe to the channel. And if you like this video, please click a like because it really, really helps. Thanks. And I'll see you in part two. Bye-bye.